Welcome to Hey Therapist. I'm your host, Leslie Ross. With me is my producer, Jay Wesley Lindley. Let's get mental. Welcome back to Hey Therapist. Today, we are going to discuss worry, the difference of worry and anxiety. We've talked about anxiety before a little bit. One of the things that is different with anxiety and worry is anxiety is kind of a chronic condition. With anxiety, you worry all the time. There's never a break. You don't get a a break in it. You don't get to not worry about something. You're always kind of worst case scenarioing things. But with worry, it's more of a short term thing. Something's coming up or you're changing jobs or kids are going back to school or whatever it is and you just worry. And worry is okay, but it also can be pretty irrational. We can worry about things that we may go down the rabbit hole of worry and say, well, I'm worried about my kids. And, you know, one of the things that we saw a video about this, Jay is, Jay is the one that likes, let's talk about this. This is a good topic. So lately, you know, we've had a lot of bomb threats called into our school. It made me really think about how we worry about our children and terrible things because the world is not a fun place. We've had a couple of bomb threats called into our school. And, you know, a lot of parents are, are worried about their kids going back to school. And we live in a a small town and it's pretty rural. I mean, we've had terrible things happen, but it's not a place that it's it's common. We don't have a lot of things that are happening luckily at our schools or, you know, mass event type things. We're sheltered in that and we don't have think if someone, you know, wants to do something terrible, it's shown that they go big, right? And so they pick a spot that's highly populated. They pick a spot that is somewhere that's going to make a scene that has a lot of news or they can get a lot of attention for it. And, you know, a lot of small towns just aren't it, which is a blessing in in a way. And I'm sure that, you know, someday something terrible will happen. It's the nature of the world because the world is not a super kind place. It's also not a place that we need to have constant fear of. And when you are in a constant fear or judgment, we talk about worry and we, we talk about these things that are happening and what if it is real? And that's a thing to be concerned about. What if it is? What if something terrible happened? What would you do? That's why we plan. That's why we have you know law enforcement that comes in and does what they need to do. It's why we set up uh, situations to train and to policies in place. And it's kind of like active shooter drills. I've been involved in a lot of schools. I've been involved in a lot of active shooter drills. And it's a terrifying thing. And it's scary for our kids. And it's terrible that they have to have that worry. And they have to plan for that. They have to know what to do if a shooter comes into their school or during a bomb threat or whatever. Tornado drills. Worked with a lot of schools uh, when I was in the Moore area in tornado drills because it's necessary. And they have to know what to do because it's a very real threat. And also, it's not something we need to worry about every day. I think we're lucky in that most of our kiddos, they do the drills and they may not actually realize the reality of it, which is great. They don't need to. They don't need to worry about something that probably will never happen in their lifetime. Do they need to be prepared and train? Sure. I'm not a a super big fan of, you know, kids having to do that. But the reality is they do. You know, there's a lot of parents that argue against even the trainings and argue against doing the drills. But I would rather have a kiddo who has some muscle memory, some plan, than a kiddo who's going through it and doesn't know how to handle it. And then when we get into adulthood, we have our... Our normal worries are what about what about work? What about money? What about, you know, this or that, the housework, the relationships, those things. And it's hard when you're an adult. No one teaches you how to adult. Talking to a client the other day and we were talking about his kiddos and he's worried that he's ruined them. He's worried that he has set them up for failure. And it's something that he thinks about quite a lot. And it really doesn't cross into the the anxiety. There's no, he's not thinking about it all the time. It's not that kind of anxious fear, but it is more of a worry. What if I have set my kids up for failure? What if I'm not doing right by them? And I think a lot of parents go through that. And I think a lot of parents go through that, especially if they maybe had an addiction issue, maybe had some legal issues or were in terrible relationships and their children may have been involved in that. They worry 
what about my kids? What am I going to do? Just like I told that client, I'll tell you guys, the fact that you may be working on it or that you can work on it is okay. It means you're doing the right thing now. And your kids may be grown at this point. Maybe you never had the conversation about what happened in your past and you worry that they won't forgive you or you worry that they will hate you. Well, have you talked to them about it? Have you asked them, hey, are you, what do you think about this? And can I fix it? Can I say I'm sorry and it be okay? Can I explain to you what's going on? Because a lot of times we worry about people and their thoughts about us and what's going on and how they feel about us, but we never ask. We never stop and say, I've noticed that you're pulling away or I've noticed that you're not talking to me as much anymore. I've noticed that we don't do as many things as friend group or relationship, whatever it is. Have I done something? Is there something wrong? And you may just get an answer that says, hey, I'm just not feeling great or I'm having a rough time right now and I'm sorry that I'm pulling away and I don't mean to, but worry can be managed. And one of the things with worry, just like anxiety is, what is the reality of your worry? And I think that's what catches a lot of people up is we worry and we worry what ifs, what ifs, what ifs, and let's go the other way with it. What if nothing bad happens? What if everything's okay? What if this is just a bump in the road? The saying of nothing lasts forever is is really pretty true. Nothing is forever. And if, if you say, well, I'm going to love them forever or, or death is forever, well, sure. Eventually, you're going to, you know, move into a different stage in life and it won't feel as heavy. So when I say nothing lasts forever, I'm more focused on those feelings that you're having. Sadness decreases. We, if a relationship ends, it, it may be terrible and you may be really, really sad about it and worry that you'll never find anyone else. And you may be in your head that the loneliness is going to be there. Maybe. But what if it's not? What if you meet someone else? What if you put yourself out there again? And then there's the worry of, well, what if I do? And it, and it ends. What if it does? This one did. And you made it through. The next one might too. And then you keep trying. Because like we said way back in the beginning, one of the first episodes we talked about not everyone likes you and you're not going to like everyone. I've dated some really great men, but they weren't my person. They weren't the one for me. And it sucked because they were great people, but maybe there wasn't the attraction there or there were some fundamental differences that just didn't and wouldn't line up in the long run. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can compromise on. There's a lot of things that you can balance out with each other. There's a lot of things you can't. And eventually those things will come into play and they could give you some pretty big speed bumps down the road and you may think, oh, it's no big deal, but it's something that's fundamental to you or fundamental to them. Eventually it'll be a big deal. Somewhere along the line, it will be a big deal. When we worry about being alone and we worry about these things and we worry about money and we worry about bills and we worry about these things, okay, we can worry and then we find a solution. So what is the solution to what you're worrying about? Maybe it's just, I have to let it go. Maybe it really is just the, well, I'm worried about it. Is there anything you can do about it? No, not really. Okay, then let's not worry too much about it. Because if there's nothing you can do about it, then maybe the likelihood is this is something that won't happen. There's basic worries we all have, right? We're all, we're all worried we're going to get fired. It's a fear. Everybody's worried. Oh, what if I get fired? Well, what if you do? You found a job when you were looking for that one. There's jobs out there. It may not be what you want, but it may just be a setback. You may just have to regroup and figure out something different. What if I hurt myself? Well, what if you do? There's hospitals. There's health care. If you don't have it, then you'll make a payment plan and pay them $20 for the rest of your life. Whatever you need to do, there's a solution. I think what happens when we worry is we get stuck in these negative thought patterns. We get stuck in this fear and we forget that there is another side of it. We forget that the possibility is maybe nothing bad happens. I'm worried about this for nothing. And like we've, I've said before, no pre-stressing. We worry, well, what if I don't? Well, what if you don't? What if you don't get the job? What if you don't pass the test? What if you don't get into this? Or what if you don't? What's your backup plan? Because usually worry comes when we don't have a plan. Worry comes when we have no alternatives. Sometimes it may be, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I'll do. Okay, well, let's figure it out. Let's think about what you can do. Let's make a plan for these worries. Let's make a plan for what happens if. And in that plan, it's both positive and negatives. We don't want 
these small worries to turn into something bigger. We don't want them to become anxiety. We don't want it to become a permanent issue. We want ourselves to be pretty level. And there will be times where you're not. There will be times where you might spiral and things get out of control and we are concerned about things that maybe we shouldn't be concerned about and we're concerned about things that most likely won't ever happen. You know, I've dealt with a whole lot of people who are worried about things and they come in and there's this they're just spiraling about something and I'm like, what are the actual odds of this happening? Do you know of anyone this has happened to? Do you know how frequently that happens. And usually it's a pretty small amount, like almost a minuscule amount. So why are you worried about it? Because the reality is, can bad things happen? Yes. Do bad things happen? Absolutely. But what is the likelihood of whatever bad thing you're thinking about happening? And it's usually pretty slim. Um, You know, I've dealt with clients who they're just anxious. They worry about their kids. They worry about their families. My mother is a worrier. God love her. She worries about things and she wants to know where we are and she worries about what we're doing and it's just who she is. So my whole family is on Live 360 because I don't care if my mom knows where I am. She may not always like where I am, but she knows where I am. I'm in mid 40s. She knows where everybody in the family is. She can open her phone and it helps her reduce her worry. And it doesn't affect anybody else. Like we don't care. We're all grownish people. We don't care. Fine, track us. Worry about where we are. Worry that we're out late. That's okay. But it makes her feel better to be able to open that phone and go, oh, they're safe at home. Or, well, they're out, still out here. They're still there. there. It looks like they're over here at this person's house or they're out having dinner. And so it, it makes her feel better. And it's those little solutions that you can find that in the grand scheme of things, you know, someone, if they had the wrong outlook on it, could be like, well, I don't want somebody tracking me. I don't want somebody knowing we're my business. They should just trust me. Da, 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 da. It's not a, it's not about that. It's because I'm, we're worriers. I'm a worrier. When I'm in a relationship with someone and it's a serious relationship, I like to know where they are. I am a worrier. I want to know if I see something about a car crash or something bad happen, I can look and go, nope, they're working. I don't have to be like, oh my gosh, are you on the road? Because right now you should be on the road. Are you on the road? And just, it's okay. I was in a long distance relationship for a while and with much resistance, he finally would do that because we were driving back and forth and I didn't want to be the person like, oh my gosh, have you made it home yet? Like, it, where are you at? What, it was nice for me to know, okay, you're safe. Because I'm a worrier too. And I get it from my mama because things are genetic. And as much as I hate to admit that, they are. And it just, it made me feel better. And it wasn't anything that's ever abused. You know, if you're in a healthy enough relationship, something like that is not something that's going to be used. It's not something that you're using to say, hey, I'm a worrier. I like to know when you're at work. You know, we have a lot of plants around here. Sometimes, uh, you know, things happen at the plants. There's fires or there are accidents or whatever. And for people whose significant others work there, they may want to be able to go, okay, they're still there. They're okay. It has, you know, crash detection on it. Like, I, oh goodness, there's been a problem. Like I can send help. I can, I can know that something's, that something's happened instead of, of my ridiculous fears that something bad has happened. I don't have to let you in on that. You don't have to know that I'm super worried about everything all the time because I'm not messaging you about it. I can just look and go, oh, everything is safe. It goes to what kind of relationships are you in? If you say, listen, I would really like to have a location thing for you because it makes me feel better. And it's not... A I don't trust you thing. And if you are in a healthy enough relationship, your partner's going to know that it's not about you not trusting them. It's because they know who you are and they know you worry. It's finding solutions, right? I said all that to say, we find solutions for what we worry about. It may be, well, my kiddo is going to school. I worry about him at school. Okay, we every parent always has worried about their kid at school. How do you find a solution to that? Maybe you go up and figure out what the policies are with the school. If the school doesn't have any, maybe you help set those policies. Maybe you find out uh, what you, to do in an emergency. Because a lot of times parents aren't super informed. And it's it's not really one of those things that a lot of the parents just don't care. It's just a lot of that information isn't always shared because it's kind of usually unnecessary. If you are a worrier about those things, you find out what the policies are. You find out what happens if. And that can sometimes soothe 
those thoughts. And that's usually with everything. You know, if, if there's downsizing at your jobs happening, if you know there's layoffs coming and you're worried you might be one of them, then get ahead of it. How do you make yourself more valuable at that job if a layoff is an inevitable and they're starting? Even if you don't think you may be part of it, go ahead and start looking for jobs because the best time to look for a job is when you have one. Go ahead and put yourself out there. If you're not part of the layoffs, then you're fine. You stay where you are. But if you are, then you've already put some feelers out there and you're already ahead of the game and you're already ahead of some of these people who didn't plan for it. And now they may be competing for the same type of jobs, but you've already applied. If we're worrying, if you catch yourself just worrying about something, sitting there and just ruminating is what it's called, where you're just going over and over and over and you're worried and and you're fearful and you're starting to have these thoughts, it's really important to stop and say, okay, what is the reality of this? Just like clients who are afraid of flying or driving or any of those things, do accidents happen? Yes. Have you been in an accident before? Probably. How likely is it that you'll be in an accident again? And how long has it been? Maybe you are super accident prone. Maybe you shouldn't be driving. I mean, I, I've had some friends and I'm like, oh, I'll drive always. You're never going to drive. One of my closest, closest friends was just in a terrible car crash. And it really, it shook her. And it shook her more because the kids' car seats were in there. The kids were not. But the kids' car seats were in there. And they were damaged. And so it, it really shook her more but when we started talking about it, has she been in a bad wreck before? Yes, but it was 10, 15 years ago. So if you're in a bad wreck and then you're afraid of driving, it's normal. And having that fear is normal and being way more cautious is normal. If we let the fear stop us, the fear will always stop us. So knowing, yeah, this is normal and I'm going to drive. And if you just can't, you can't, but then you do. Because the reality is, sure, do bad accidents happen? Yes. Can they be prevented? Sometimes. Is it inevitable? No. Think about how often you drive and how much you drive and everywhere you go and how many times you get in that car and go here and there and yonder and you are out and about and doing the things and you may drive for a week or two and not even see a, a car crash, much less be involved in one. So we get in this, in this mindset that it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, the likelihood is pretty slim. And that's when it's important to look at those likelihoods. It's important to weigh out those options, sit and just think about it. If you need to write out a list, write out a list, whatever works for you. But we want to find alternatives. We want to find alternatives to the negative worry because worry will make you sick. It is one of those things that it can create ulcers. It can create stomach issues. It can create restlessness and sleepless nights and all of those things because we're just ruminating and stuck in this negative thought pattern. But what if nothing bad happens? And that's where we need to focus our worry is when we're when we're focusing on our worry, we are forgetting the other side of it. We're forgetting the probability of it happening. We're forgetting, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Maybe. And if it does, this is my plan. And again, if we have that plan, if you're set, if you set yourself up for it, then you can get ahead of it. You can be better. You can feel better. You can sleep better. The other side of that is if you're always worrying and you always have an exit plan, especially in friendships and relationships and those types of things, you may be sabotaging yourself a little bit. If you have fr friendship or relationships and you're worried that you're going to say something wrong, you're worried that they're going to judge you, you're worried that then you may pull away. You may not be all in. And so you may not, you may not get the value of that relationship. You may miss out on a lot of things because they sense that you're withdrawn. They sense that you're not all in. And when you're not all in, why should they be? If you if you catch yourself, well, I'm worried that they're not going to stay with me. I'm worried that they don't like me. I'm worried that they're going to judge me. I'm worried about these things. Then you're probably acting in that manner. In reality, if you are acting in that manner, two things are going to happen. One, you're going to pull away. You're going to be a different person. You're not going to give your best performance in, like I said, friendships, relationships, even in the workplace. 
if you doubt your skills, if you doubt your ability and you don't put yourself out there, then you're not giving yourself a fighting chance. And they may say, well, you know, you're underperforming here or man, you don't, you don't join in the group chats. Where are you on the discord? Where are you? And it's like, well, I'm worried that you guys are going to judge me. If you have friendships where you feel they are going to judge you or a relationship where you feel they are going to judge you, then that's probably not one you want to be in to start with, first off. Secondly, if they're like, we're, you're one of us, one of us, one of us, you're one of us, we're not going to judge you. Why are you worried about this? Then it's time to look inward. Why are you worried about this? Have people judged you in the past? Have you felt out of place? Have you been in a position where people did make fun of you or whatever? What is the same about this situation? Probably nothing because you've probably matured a little or you've gotten a different set of friends and these friends are cool. Maybe they're big old nerdy whatever's just like you are or they love the same things and that's how you met them because you have this shared like of whatever it is that you, however you met them or how you got involved. The likelihood is they're not going to judge you. So why do you feel like they will? What inside you is making that? And then that's the part you need to work on. That's the part you need to be concerned about. And when you're super negative about yourself and you project that out, you may lose a lot of friends. You may not be in the relationship you want to be in. As much as people can love you, they don't want to be around someone who is negative all the time. They don't want to be around someone who puts themselves down because I can only tell you that you're good enough so many times. I can only say, no, I I don't know why you're worried about this. I don't know why you're, there, it's not anything I think about. I don't know why you're thinking about it. So many times that I'm just being like, okay, I'm, I can't convince you that you're a good enough partner or friend or worker. You need to figure this out. And I can't do that for you because we all have our shit. We all have our worries. We all have our things that we're stressing about. And sometimes we share those and sometimes we don't. And a lot of times when we don't, it's because we know that it's kind of silly that we're even stressing about it, but we need to worry about that. We need to concern ourselves with that. When we're we're stuck in that cycle of worry, we want to focus on what can I do to fix it? What can I do to change these thought patterns in myself? What can I do to plan for this worst case scenario that I have most likely created in my head. Sometimes worry is is real. Sometimes there are valid things to be worried about. I've dealt with custody cases. I've dealt with, you know, again, job changes or layoffs or those types of things with people. And it's a valid concern. What if they do this? What if they, well, then, then you'll figure it out. And that's what it really boils down to is you can figure it out if you unstuck yourself, we get stuck in the worry and that worry can become anxiety. If we start worrying about every little thing, then you can create the more chronic condition of anxiety. It brings on a whole new host of issues because you may be fine. You may not be a worrier and then something happens and you turn into a worrier and maybe it's an illness. Maybe it's something that has happened in the family. Maybe it's something that happened in a relationship, friendship, relationship, whatever. And then you become a worrier. You worry about it all the time. You worry about this. You worry about that. You start really panicking about things that normally you wouldn't concern yourself with. It's time to stop and regroup. Especially when we have the end of something and these introspective things usually come at the end of something, a death, a relationship, a job, losing everything, you know, in a natural disaster type situation. We can really spiral into the, what if it happens again? What am I going to do? What does this look like? And it's, it's valid because you want to plan and it's valid because it has happened to you once. The likelihood of it happening again is pretty slim. And then the other side of it is, okay, what if it does? How do I how do I prepare for that? What is something that I can do to be more prepared? So when we're talking about worry, it really is it's real and we all do it, but it's something that we can counteract with just some mindfulness, some 
meditation, if you're into that sort of thing, to just sit down with our thoughts. And if we start that spiral of the what ifs and we're negative, 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 what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, and it's terrible and the whole world is falling apart. Okay. What if it's not? Being very present in our worry because we can justify our worry. Like I can find all kinds of, when I'm worrying about something, I can find all kinds of examples through history, personal history, friends, history, 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 whatever. I can find all these examples that back up whatever negative thought that I'm having, that back up whatever irrational thoughts that I am stuck on. And then if I really stop and make myself go, okay, now you've gone down that rabbit hole. What if none of that happens? What if life keeps going on like it is? Or what if it leads to something better? It's the whole hindsight's twenty twenty thing, but I can look back into some terrible situations in my life and they make sense now. I can go, oh, that's why that happened. Some of them I can't. There's times in my life that terrible things happened or heartbreak or friendships ended or jobs were lost or I didn't get the job I wanted and I can't make sense of it. There, you know, there's sometimes there's no rhyme or reason to it, but I think that's life because you're not going through life alone. In life, we interact with other humans and other humans make decisions that affect your life. So it's important to be as in charge of your own life as you can be. And that's being happy with yourself. It's being okay in whatever situation that you're in. And that doesn't mean you don't want to do better. It means right now, this is where I am. Because if you are in a in a place in your life that you don't want to be, a relationship, a job, a friendship, a a house, a city, whatever it is, you can change that. If you get focused on, this is how it is. This is my life. I'm just, I'm stuck. You're not stuck. There is always a way out. There is always a way to make that change. And it may be stepping out of the box that you're in. It may be reaching out for help that you wouldn't have normally reached out for. It may be just making a huge decision and packing up everything you have and moving to the location that you want to live in, whatever it is, there's always a way to make a change. And there are situations that feel hopeless. I have been in them. Something changed in me that created a way for me to get out. It created a way for me to leave the job, leave the relationship, leave whatever it was, or invest more into the job, the relationship, whatever it was. And it's looking for those opportunities because I was able to unstuck myself. And being able to do that is is really important. It's important for you alone inside your own brain holes to say this is not permanent because very few things are permanent. And even if you say, well, I have this health issue. Okay, you have this health issue. I'm sure we can find some great examples of people with these same health issues who have been super productive in life. But when it first happens, it seems so big, just like with anything. When it first happens, it seems so big and we worry that it's going to happen again. And a lot of times it won't ever because maybe you learned from this one. Maybe this is the one that you needed that was the kick in the butt to make the change, to do the things, to stop the worry. I say all that again to say it's really important When we're stuck in those negative thoughts, what is the alternative? There is another side to everything. There's always a fork in the road. Sometimes we pick the wrong way, but that doesn't mean we can't circle back and take the other fork that we wanted to take or the other fork we didn't consider taking, or we don't run into another one. Because I'm I'm a firm believer that we are put in places that we're supposed to be most of the time. Sometimes things happen and we're not, but most of the time we're put in places that we're supposed to be. And we may not understand that, but if you give it a chance, then some of those worries can go away. If you say, this is, you know, for some reason I'm here, I need to make the best of it. I need to make this the learning experience and go, I never want to be in this place again. I'm going to move forward. It's really about making a plan and moving forward and not just being stuck in our worry. For my producer, Jay Lindley, I'm Leslie Ross. Thank you all for joining us. Please send any questions or comments through the website, heytherapist.com, or email help at heytherapist.com. They may be featured on the show anonymously. Hey Therapist is an SEOK radio production.
and is for your entertainment purposes only. Thank you for joining us. Make good choices.